inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Now Your Mother's Hobbies. This week's episode, we're looking at the final miniature for Mage of the Mirror, and it's the Elf Variant. We have a male elf here, as opposed to the original version, which was a female elf. Uh, our core box this time around, with the revamp, is uh, a female elf, so our variant is a male. A really different sculpt. Crazy different. He's got a shield, a little dagger. He's looking a lot like the artwork from the original box. But with that out of the way, let's get painting. First things first, we're going to do Blood Angels Red for this cape. He's got a big red cape uh, swooping around him, just like all the other elves. There's a lot that's going to be similar to the other elves, but he is a little bit different. He, he does have a little bit of a different take on some things, uh, not to mention his equipment. But we're going to start off with this big old cape. It takes up a lot of the model. It's going to make you feel real accomplished to get it out of the way. And this little tassel part at the front is also red. It's tied at the front. I double check the artwork. It is not a buckle or anything like that. It is tied up at the front. Then he's got black pants. So we're using black Templar or kind of off blue. We're going to try to do a little bit of a bluey black, but we'll see how that, that turns out. His uh, pants and his shirt, all of his under stuff. So whatever we painted purple on the other guys is going to be this uh, this dark black. You'll immediately see how well this contrasts with what is going to be his white tunic. And I really liked the first impression it gave, as well as the final impression. Snakebite leather here for the boots. We're going to do all the leather here on this guy uh, with the snakebite leather. There's not really any need to do a, a differentiation of the leathers. So he's got some gloves, he's got some boots, and he's got a few belts uh, wrapped around his chest. So just go around on get, and get those. They're spaced far enough apart that uh, there's no real need to do some extra different colors unless you want to. Basilicanum gray for all of our steel gray parts. In the artwork, uh, he's got a sword sheath, but in reality on the sculpt he doesn't, so I chose to do that uh, steel. And then he's got this ornate rim on the shield that I painted this as well. Gulliman flesh for the flesh. And we're also going to use this to block in our golds as usual. Not a lot of flesh on this guy. He's pretty covered up. So just the face. And then the gold is spread out and dotted all over the place as well as uh, some trim. Now you might think from the artwork he's got a big shining shield that we would do a big gold shield. But uh, we're going to do something different and something that I think will make the shield stand out a lot more. So go around and get the emblem at least. And then the trim on his uh, tunic and the little, the little uh, weapons he's got. Skeleton Horde for his dirty blonde hair. We're going to give him some blonde hair. We could go even brighter with a yellow or something like that. But uh, you'll see what we do with the yellow later, and I didn't want to distract from that. Frost Heart for the blade. Something about me likes giving these elves magic blades, and uh, nothing stops here. He's going to get another magic blade. Apothecary White. Putting that all around for the tunic. Just to get some extra definition and tone across those shadows. We're using a Yandin yellow, and we're going to put that on the shield. From the art and the sculpt, I got the idea of a sunburst, and I thought painting it all yellow would really give that up. We're going in with Evil Sun's Scarlet here to add some highlights and bring back some, some definition to his, uh, his cape. Now my Zenithal was not the smoothest underneath, so he was a little muddy and I had to do a little extra work to really bring up those mid-tones again and, and bring up those highlights, make them bright. Um, and so I did that with this. Dark Reaper, we're gonna use this on his pants to give his black pants a little bit of a cool kind of blue-gray look. 
bring up some tones in there, give some color, smooth out pooling, etc. Then we're going to dry brush Fenrisian gray or any sort of cool gray uh, over top. Now normally I would have used a brush to do this and, and paint it on, but my Fenrisian gray is dead. I didn't have time to go out. This was the next best thing and we're going to work with it and you'll see how we can achieve uh, a similar look to, to how I, I envisioned this. It was a little too bright initially, so I put some Drakenhof nightshade on to get it dimmed down and bluer. Uh, I think in hindsight, I would have watered this down a little bit. It got a little darker than I wanted. Um, maybe even just uh, isolated it to the recesses. So you don't have to follow this completely as even I uh, made some mistakes or could have pulled back a little bit. Gun metal here for all of the metals. Lining around that shield, be nice and careful. Take your time. Go around on the sides, and he's also got that blade uh, sticking out from between his legs. <laughs> Get that little guy down there. And he's got some buckles as well on those belts. Retributor armor, my gold of choice. We're putting this on the shield decal, the big sunburst design. Get all those weapons and around the trim of his tunic. He's also got a small sheath here, probably for his dagger, and we're gonna do some designs on there. Back to the steel, we got Nuln Oil Gloss to gloss up all those metallic bits, tie them all together, make them real shiny. Remember, this is discontinued paint, so if you don't have it, uh, you can just take Nuln Oil, mix it with some uh, gloss medium, and there you go. If you're using the Citadel line, that would be something like Art Coat. And then the same thing for the Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss, we're going to do that for the gold. And again, if you don't have the gloss version because it's discontinued, make your own. Just use a Flesh Shade with a gloss varnish. Cadian Flesh Tone, we're going to clean up his skin. Again, uh, bears repeating that my Zenithal was not as, you know, smooth as it could be, so we're making changes on the fly. We're going to just do a little more painting, right? If those mid-tones didn't come out because the undercoat wasn't bright enough, we just paint them in there. And that's what we're doing here, um, as well as, of course, adding some highlight in. Kislev Flesh, another highlight. Bringing his skin up. He's a fair elf. We're going to make him pale and business as usual. Lastly, Pallid Witch Flesh, and we're going to use that for the most glossiest, sheeniest, shiny pale highlights that we got. Nose, cheekbones, chin, tips of those ears, all that jazz. Got a few little extras that we can do on this guy. First of all, Fenrisian Grey. I tried to revive it the best I could. <laughs> I'll have to get another pot before I, I do another one. Uh, but just adding some extra highlight and detail on those pants. Some little texture parts, uh, some little pops of highlight here and there, uh, just to make the, the pants and, and the undershirt stand out a little more. They're a little too dark, a little getting lost, you know what I mean. Chrome for all the metallics. Putting some blingy highlights, some sheens, some shines, some little pings here and there. Dotting all around. This sunburst shape is really fun to experiment with where, where the light might come from. You can use the actual lighting as a reminder here uh, of what reflects off of your metallic and use that as a guide for you know where you want to put some of your highlights. Just angle the mini where you have some really nice highlight definition and then paint over top where you see those, those high points. He's got his sword down here as well, just getting a little edge on that. Wraithbone, we're cleaning up his badges. He has some stars down here that uh, I had done earlier. They didn't stand out, so we're cleaning them up with some Wraithbone. We're gonna do a second take. We're gonna make them real bright. We're also gonna use this Wraithbone as a highlight to the painted yellow on the shield. Uh, just on the upper half, as well as his sandy blonde hair. Getting in that anime highlight that we like to do so well.
Bold Titanium White to continue that hair highlight to get that comic booky look. Just popping it in there into the center parts, getting an extreme bright in that mop of hair. Really increasing the detail in there and uh, making it pop. We're also going to use this on the stars, his badges. Again, we're really going to try to make them stand out because they didn't before. So putting white in there to brighten them up. And we're also going to use this white on the tunic, just like how we did on the other elves. We're going to dry brush on that magic blade for just a quick uh, non-metallic or magic, you know, look you got going on. In this case, it's magic, but we've used it before on non-metallic. So just a dry brush there. And we're also going to dry brush his cape. I figured there just wasn't enough detail going on. It wasn't bright enough. I wanted some extra oomph. And so we put that on the shield uh, as well. And in yellow, a last little touch here for those badges. Now that they're super bright undercoated, uh, this Yand in yellow is going to get really bright and stand out. Then we do our everyday basing scheme of gray paint, texture paint, dry brush, wash, and a dry brush. And there you have it. You should have a fully painted elf variant. Now you have two types of elves. Or if you have the Avalon Pledge, you'll have three. You'll have a male, a female from the core box, and you'll have this guy right here. Looking pretty cool. I've seen some variations online where they've made him look uh, a lot like Link or Legend of Zelda variants. Uh, I think that's super cool. If I had an extra one of these, I would definitely do a Breath of the Wild inspired one. I think a blue tunic would look super cool on this guy. I think even a blue and red shield would uh, be really cool stand out. But you know me, I like to stick to the artwork if it's available. And while this one is pretty similar in a lot of ways to the other elves that come in the box, he does stand out on his own by having a couple little variants in his equipment as well as uh, some of the colors used. But this is it for Mage of the Mirror, although by request I'm going to be doing a video on some of the furniture and a, a little bit of a showcase there. Before we move on to the Dread Moon, where there is a lot to paint. So until then, like, comment, subscribe, and bye bye!